Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop Elements, and Photoshop Touch. In this video, I'll be taking a look at luminance masks. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how we get on. Well, this is the image we're going to end up on, the lovely page here, but let's have a bit of theory to start with. I'm not going to go too far in depth on this. Let's make this as brief as we can. So you can see on this image that I've got this strip running from black to white on a black background. Now, if I go over to my channels, you can see how this is being made up. If I click on the red, where it's the whitest, that's when full red is coming through. Where it's black, no red is coming through. And between that, varying degrees of red. But it didn't look red, that's because exactly the same is happening with green and with blue. And so that means we get shades of grey. Let's add in a blue here and take off the grey and go back. And we can see, as we might expect, that blue is going from one end to the other. However, it fades out because green is being added in and red is being added in. And so eventually it becomes this clear white at the end where there is equal amounts of blue, green and red to its fullest extent. Let's go and add in the other two colours here. So we'll add in the green and we'll add in the red. Let's go and look at the channels again. And you can see that we've got the red, we've got the green and we've got the blue. So they look very similar and that's how this pattern is being made through these luminance values on the channels. Let's go and put that into our real world situation, the lovely page here. So here we are in the channels and you can see here's the reds, here's the greens and here's the blues. So to put this into context, page has got very red hair. So here on the red channel you can see it's lighter in the hair than it is on the green and the blue. There isn't so much red coming through in its luminance values. But this means that I can select it easier. So if I press control and hover over the icon for this red channel, I've got a pointy hand with a dotted square. Now this means I'm going to make a selection. So if I click here, you can see that I start doing that. I've made a selection. Now, just like making selections outside of channels, I can now add in shift. So that's control or command if you're using a Mac and shift. And now I get a plus sign inside my dotted square, which means I'm going to add to this. So I'm going to add another one. That's two, three and four. Let's scooch over to that first one and have a look, see what I've done here. So here we go. Here's our channels. I'm going to go onto the red and I'm going to control or command and then click. And you can see that I've selected all of the reds, half of the blues and the greens. Shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. I've added more luminance values. Let's go back to my image of page and let's turn on the RGB and go to layers. Now I've got this rather complicated selection. I can do things with it. So I'm going to come I'm down here and make a levels adjustment layer. And very simply, I'm just going to dial in um, some numbers that I know work reasonably well for this. Uh, 43, 2.83, and finally 234. You can see we've made this very high key image very quickly. So that's before and that's after. Let's take that off. Let's go back to the channels because it doesn't have to be all on one channel. So control or command, and then I'm going to click on the blue add shift into that and click again on the blue. Let's add a couple of greens, green and green, and maybe one red. Now I can take that selection and I can inverse it. Let's go back to the RGB channel, layers, and let's create another levels adjustment layer. Now you'll see that this time it's a very black mask. That's the mask we've created this time. This is the mask that we created last time. Okay, let's go back to this one. And let's see what we can do here. Well, let's pull this one in and maybe drop that one down. And very quickly, we've made a rather different kind of effect. We've really reddened the hair here. But of course, we can add them both in together and I can change the blend mode of these. I'm going to change this one maybe to soft light. 
can reduce the opacity a bit. So you can see how very quickly we can change an image just by using luminance masks. And of course, we can borrow the luminance masks in exactly the same way as we just created them. So I'm gonna press Control or Command and click on this mask here, and we've reselected it. Now I can come down, and maybe this time I choose a hue saturation. I'll colorize it perhaps. And now you see, we're starting to change Paige's hair color now. Okay, I'm not a big fan of that, but you see how we can really work very quickly with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this mask here and very quickly just add a brush and I would be more careful than this obviously doing a, on a real image but for now let's just very quickly just bring Paige's face back to us just so we can finish this one off. So where we were to start with and then that's our choice one, our choice two put that back into uh, normal of course and we could also add in other effects too should we wish very very quickly indeed so there we go luminance marks remember you just have to go over to the channels press control or command and start clicking away and then add shift in to add others should you wish there we go I'm Eric Reno. This has been a video for tipsquirrel.com. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.